earthquakes kill more people than any other weapon of nature. And ancient earthquakes were far more destructive than ones of recent times. For instance, in 115 AD, 2,000 years ago, 250,000 people were killed in one hit alone. This was in ancient Antioch. Staggering. Now, modern science doesn't even begin to understand earthquakes, let alone their related phenomena, volcanoes and tsunamis. Let's shed some new light on these deadly aspects of nature using the electric universe model. The current academic tectonic plate theory doesn't even begin to come close to explaining so many of the related events accompanying earthquakes. There are around a dozen phenomena that need our special attention. Let's go through them one by one. Tsunamis invariably accompany earthquakes if they're by the sea. For instance, at Lisbon and Port Royal in Jamaica, very old earthquakes, the sea went well out, leaving all the fish stranded, sometimes even two, three kilometers, and then with renewed fury and vigor, it rushes back in, taking all before it and going well inland. This phenomena is extraordinary. What causes it, we don't know, but we're going to investigate. Now here we have a classic combination of tsunami and earthquake together around this bay. See all these smashed shells burnt and pulverized together. A typical artifact of an earthquake. And even more up here, stretching right around this particular bay. Let's just get a close up of these shells. See how they're absolutely mangled and burnt? What force of nature was able to exert that destructive, potent force? Just note some of this particularly up here. What causes separation of the different clay and earth layers? Note the dump of tilt with all the shells in it right along this ridge line. It's quite remarkable when you actually start to think about these forces. This tree burnt, buried, metamorphosized amongst the rock, bits of wood in the rock, partially petrified. What forces again of nature were powerful enough to roll, thrust, bury this wood, petrify it and burn it right along this foreshore. See this metamorphosized piece of rock, pebbles cemented together, buried amongst it the wood of this tree stretching right along the beach and under the water. And see how it's burnt, badly burnt. This has been a devastating earthquake with fiery eruptions a mega tsunami pulverizing this coast and electrical effects that we're going to explain later. Calm, serene bay. No wind, sea everywhere, sand. Who'd have thought that 500 to 1,000 years ago this was the scene of a devastating mega tsunami and earthquake that totally changed the landscape. Where you now see sea, there were meadows. What happened? In fact, a tsunami in around 500 AD ravaged the whole of the Lebanese coastline, burying Beirut, Byblos, and other cities. This was accompanied by extremely destructive earthquakes. But this was merely the last of a devastating series that have ravaged this area. Lakes and water holes almost always either formed or destroyed whenever there's a major earthquake. In 1692 in Catania, Sicily, the whole town disappeared under the earth to be replaced by a lake, a prime example of earthquakes deadly action. 
These activities are invariably accompanied by sulfurous fumes and bitumen clouded water and outbursts. But now we come to more of the exciting facts that science has only recently discovered. The congruence of sunspot minima and earthquakes. Sunspots are upon the sun's surface and they're the magnetic focus where solar flares and coronal mass ejections are formed. The number of sunspots moves from a maxima to a minima over a period averaging 11 years. This has been recorded since at least 1600 to the present day. Most earthquakes occur during times of sunspot minima and the worst of all when there's no sunspots at all. For instance, 1692 in Sicily, the worst earthquake possibly of recent times when 150,000 people were killed. And beginning 1690, no sunspots for five years. 1645, an equally bad period, none for six years. But look at the present era of the 20th century. Hardly any massive earthquakes, but look at the astounding number of sunspots. The next phenomenon is incredibly hard to explain if you use the theory of tectonic plates. This is the violent thunderstorms accompanied by horrific winds and very destructive lightning bolts. In the Sicilian earthquake of 1692, it was reported that entire buildings were destroyed by the thunderbolts themselves, while trees were uprooted and thrust into the air. And here's some curious accompanying dramas of earthquakes. War, drought and plague. These are invariably mentioned in ancient texts. For instance, Thucydides starts his Peloponnesian War drama with the plague and earthquakes in Athens. Certainly modern scientist Henry Svensmark ties weather in with sunspots and coronal mass ejections. Perhaps these are related events. We'll investigate later. Many sources talk of mountain building, mountain shifting and mountain destruction. For instance, at Port Royal in Jamaica, hills were built and destroyed in this one great earthquake. In Sicily and Calabria, hills were built only to denigrate back to the earth again and vast tracts of land moved across the landscape. Luminescent glowing lights are seen in the skies before, during and after an earthquake. They are likened sometimes to aurora, only usually blue but sometimes multi-spectrum in effect. They are usually close to the epicentre but have been recorded as far away as 70 miles. A typical cloud is formed above an earthquake epicenter. An example exists from the Calabrian earthquakes of 1638. On arriving by sea to St Euphemia, a large flat cloud was seen over a lake. Where the lake was, St Euphemia had been swallowed by the earth. Finally, in our dissection of earthquake phenomena, we come to animal sensitivity. They are curiously receptive well before an earthquake strikes to its effects. How do we explain these seemingly unrelated earthquake phenomena? Tectonic plates only handles the grating and mashing of rocks. How do we explain the electrical effects? This is where the electric universe theory comes in. If we try this paradigm and apply it to earthquakes, some surprising results come about. In the next episode, I'll be interviewing physicist Wolf Thornhill. He's the boundary rider of science. He's got some amazing new insights into earthquakes. Wait for the next episode. See you then. starts your thinking, keep us filming by subscribing for only $10 a year. 
You can then immediately watch all the episodes available. Then join us in the journey and actually help us as we make new episodes every month.